I'm not questioning the Lord this morning on what He has asked me to bring. I sit here and I wonder why, to a certain extent, in my own mind. But I know that He knew who was going to be here today. He knew who you was going to meet in the next few days. Amen. The next week, <coughs> next month. He knew the situation that that person's going to be in and the need that that person's going to have. But I want you to look in Proverbs chapter 6 and verse 16, 17, 18, and 19. Uh, I'd like for you to take and uh, sometime today, start at verse 12 and read the whole remainder of that chapter to get the full point of what he's asking here, talking about. There's seven things that God hates. Hates us. Verse 16 says this, six things that God hates. Yes, seven are an abomination to him. Abomination in the dictionary says it's nasty, disgusting, hateful, and very unpleasant in God's eyes. And I want you to look at it for just a moment. I want to go here and the love of God is beyond under, our understanding. We, we cannot understand why He has taken some people that has done some tremendous things in their lives and uh, willing to save their soul. Amen. I, I can't, I, uh, sometimes it just gets to me, you know, but I know He's no respecter of person. But I, I can tell you that if he hadn't spoke to me when he spoke to me, where would I be today? What would I be doing? Yeah. I hope I don't interfere too much. He, lo he loves the lost sinner. Not what they do, not what they're doing. Amen. I just got through readings th uh, talking about the sayings that he hates. If you go on down through there and tells you, says there uh, in verse 17, a proud look, <coughs> a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood. That's the three that I'm going to walk on, talk on about this morning. The rest of them, I, I've got another message prepared, uh, starting to be prepared. For the remainder of it, but he hasn't given me the okay to go ahead and when to, to deliver it. But he has to say in in the Romans chapter five and verse eight, it says, "But God demonstrated His love, His own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Amen. Christ died for us." I just want you to put into your mind what he just got. What I just got through saying. When yet we were sinners. When we was out there in the world doing things that we thought we was enjoying. Things that was disgusting to Him. Things that uh, were hateful to Him. Things were nasty. Things were uh, dis, dis, uh, terrible. Unpleasant. We were doing all them kinds of things. We thought that we was doing something we really enjoyed. And yet He loved us. He protected us. You said, well, I don't know about that. You're still here alive, aren't you? Amen. You, he kept you alive up until the day He called on you to come and give your heart and life to the Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> His love made salvation possible for us in John 3.16 because everybody knows what that said. He loved the world so much that He sent His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. His love was sent to us. 
when he hung there on the cross. He signed, sealed, and delivered it right there on the cross, his love. When he looked out over the crowd and said, Father, forgive them for they know not know what they're doing. How many are you willing to forgive in your life? John, 1 John chapter 4 and verse 10 says, And this is love. Not that we love God, but He loved us. Amen. And sent His only Son for our sins. Oh, what a blessing, Noah, that, that He is, loves us so much. What an opportunity that we have. That we can have a peace with Him. To satisfy to make calm. To give us something that we love to want about. It says in the primitive people used to uh, please their gods by making sacrifices. But God hates things that brings His children pain. God hates the pain that Sister Betty had to go through. Amen. God hated the pain that Jim and their back had to go through surgery for and the rest of you, whatever it may be, the pain that you got. But the sin in this world brought it on, people. God mm -hmm. didn't, He didn't cause it. A lot of people blaming God for it. He didn't call cause it. He allowed it to happen to get your attention maybe or get somebody else's attention in your immediate family. One way or the other, God allowed it to happen. One of these days, we're going to thank Him for it. We will we'll, we'll consider these three themes today uh, in here that I just read just a minute ago, and I'll reread them to you in verse uh, 17. A proud look, a lying tongue, and the hands that shed innocent blood. God hates a proud person. He hates people that get a glimpse of things in their lives that they think they like to have. People that will think, well, look at me. How great I am. How proud I am of knowing and doing what I'm doing. Now, we can, we can stand up here and... Uh, and I can, I can say this in, in behalf of myself. And in, in what I used to do was lay carpet. I never did go around bragging on myself to, as being bragging that I'm better than anybody else. But I, I bragged to a certain extent that if it can be done, I can do it. And I think this is the way in our lives today. That if, we, if it can be done... God wants us to do it. Amen. He wants us to take care of things. You know, uh, talked about being uh, proud, you know. Talked about Lucifer. How he was. How you have fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. How you could cut down to the ground you who oh, awake, are wicked all nations. Here's the scene. Suddenly shifted from underworld to heaven. To emphasize the unbidden pride of a king, of Satan, engaging in him. Satan entered into that angel, that Lucifer, this morning star. And he wanted to be the greatest that it could be. And a lot, there's a lot of people around today that feel maybe the same way, you know. They feel like it, it can be not done. Nobody else can do it any better than maybe if you want to put it, than what I can do. But I never professed to be the greatest preacher in my life, in anybody's life. I told the Lord when Mike Quinney called me into the ministry, I said, you know me. He said, I called you 
to do what I ask you to do. I didn't call you to be a Billy Graham or I didn't call you to be uh, another uh, Spurgeon or someone. And he said, I called you to be Dormal West. Amen. And for you to deliver the message that I give you. But Lucifer was the son of the morning, the shining one. And he got to the place where he wanted to be higher than what God was. He wanted to be the king. And that brought him down to ground. And people, when we get to puffing ourselves up, we're getting proud of ourselves, of what we're able to accomplish in our lives. We better look out, because there's going to be a fall. Amen. And I'll tell you something, that fall hurts. <laughs> it hurts a little bit more than what that woodshed does. <laughs> we find it for you that have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above all the stars of God. I will also sit at the, the mount of the congregation on the far side of the north. That was who Lucifer talking. I will, I will. And I'll tell you sometimes we better watch when we say I will and I can and be to brag, watch the bragging about it. Yet ye shall be brought down to, to the sin, the pit, the hell. Talking about it. To the lowest depths of the pit. Show the pit. Death waits there for those that try to be like God. It says in verse 9 of I didn't write it down, I'm sorry. Uh, hell is from the beneath that exists about to meet you and your coming if things are not right. What an opportunity we can have today, people. By loving the Lord Jesus Christ and being what He wants to be. He set an example that he wanted us to follow. He gave us the footsteps. He gave us a road map that he wants us to follow him into. He gives examples of what we must do love one another. But pride proceeds. Destruction. Destruction out there, if you don't watch. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 18. It says, Pride goes before destruction and hearty spirit before fall. Hearty eyes belong not to the one who has been learned at his feet, but to the one who seeks. The lonely heart. Oh, I'll tell you, children, today, I feel so sorry for people that are out there walking in this world that doesn't have any inkling. And I, I, do, I do believe that everybody today has, has had the opportunity to hear God's word. I don't believe there's a person that hasn't heard the name, even the name. And I do believe that we as in individuals have to do our, our part. As Psalmist David did. He said example, Lord my heart is not halting, nor my mind, or my, my eyes are lofty. In Psalms 131, 1. Just simply trust in Him. That's what we need. Lord is, is, is my heart. My heart is filled with Him. Loneliness and humble humility here relates to a satisfied will substitute 
to the mind of God. Spurgeon wrote something in the assembly to that. Number two, God hates a lying tongue. Thou shalt not bear false witness. You all know that seventh commandment of God. Lying begins in, begin in the Garden of Eden. Ye shall not surely die. Genesis 3 4. The story of Eve there in the garden with the ser serpent. Jesus called Satan the father of lies. In John's Gospel, chapter 8, verse 44. What an opportunity that he... God desires the truth and depth within and an honest heart. Psalm 51, 6, it talks about David was saying here in that psalm, Behold, your desires, truth, and the inward parts and in the hidden parts, you will make me know, known to me. In other words, if we allow it to come into our minds, it will enter into our hearts, and we'll know the hidden parts of our life. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. <clears throat> Truly God has. He also hates the hands of that one who sheds innocent blood. Verse 17, the latter part of 17, talks about there. God's grief grieves over the coming of the early. That came, God's grief came early, excuse me, over Cain and Abel. Uh, instant. Thou shalt not kill. Sixth commandment. God is... Pro-life relating to the abortion. One of the most saddest things that's happening in our world today is that people that have no love, no concern about their child that they've been carrying for nine months, these women, no concern about the love that God had for them, no concern about things. They just want to get out of the obligation. The mistake may be that they might try to say, well, that was just a mistake. I do believe everybody knows what happens when a child is conceived. And I do believe that God's going to hand every, hold everybody accountable. And I always thought, and I want to throw this in, I always thought that one of the greatest torments that these women are going to have, and, and fathers too that agree with it, is the crying of that baby throughout eternity. That baby's going to be in heaven, but that child, that cry of that child is going to ring in their hearts forever and forever and forever. And I think most of you that have had children knows that that cry sometimes can get on your mind, get you upset. And things. But I want to tell you something. The most gratitude thing is when that baby first comes out of the womb, when it makes that first cry. <laughs> oh, what difference does it make? When you know that okay. there's another life, another gift from God. Amen. God loves everybody. God, what God has made for us today. What lovely thing. Also remember the death of the innocent one. On the cross. Christ was the innocent one. He didn't have to go there. He shouldn't have had to go there. But he went there for you and for me. 
He suffered there. And I, I, don't, I don't think any of us could realize what suffering he went through that latter part of that week. And then come and hang on on that tree. And what a tragedy a way to hang and a way to die on that tree. But he still loved us so much that he cried out in behalf. Father, forgive them. Forgive that crowd that's standing here at my feet. Forgive those ones that hasn't yielded to me. Forgive those sinners that are out there in the world. Lord, speak, oh, speak to them. They don't know what's going on. They don't realize who I am. What it is. So Father, forgive them. Even Pilate could not find any fault in Jesus. Christ was holy, harmless, undefiled in Hebrews chapter 7, verse 26. We can have the relationship with God who is holy. We can have the relationship with to man. He is harmless. Have relationship to himself is undefiled. <clears throat> have a relationship to sin. He is without sin. He don't never never opportunity another opportunity. The sinless, the secret Savior suffered for our sins. Think of that. The sinless Savior suffered for you and me. While God hates sin, He offers full forgiveness. I can identify, or can you today, maybe I better put it that way, can you identify anything that God hates in your life today? Think of that for just a moment. Is there something that has taken place this past week, or something that you haven't taken care of? that you know that God hates. You know definitely in your heart that God hates and you're still clinging on to it. Still holding on to that. <clears throat> There's still hope for you because God, because of God's grace. Ephesians 2, 8, 9 says this, For by grace you've been saved through faith. And not of yourself, but in the gift of God. All men has done. All he has to do is ask. Not of my works, I have nothing that you can do. At least any man should boast. There's nothing that you can do to pay. I, I do believe down in my heart that if we had, if we could pay 10000 or even a, a $20,000 to be a Christian, to have Christ come into our heart and our life, I believe we could have more people willing to pay that than what there is life being a gift. Christ died and paid for our sins in Isaiah 53, 5 and 6. But He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquity. He was chastised for our peace was upon Him. And by His stripes we are healed. You're healed. Oh, what a thing. Just right there. He took our transgressions, our iniquities and stuff upon Him. Our sin upon Him. And He was chastised while He was here on that third and going on down that last week of his life. He would just uh, chastisement enough was people that would cry out there that maybe once praised him was crying crucify crucify and then again with his stripes that he took there we are healed. He's our substitute people. He went to the cross for you and I. He suffered for peace for you and I. 
his stripes we can date for our healing. It says that all we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned <coughs> everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid upon him the iniquity of us all. Oh, what, what pity it was. Every person has sinned, according to Romans 3 9. Iniquity even sinned has put upon him. Every sin in the world laid upon him that day. The sin of God hates can be forgiven. This sin that we're talking about there. Let's go ahead and read them others there while we're here. Let's start all over. A proud look. A lying tongue. A hands that shed innocent blood. A heart that diverse wickedly. A feet that be swift to run toward mischievous. A false witness to speak of lies. And he that soweth discord among the brethren. My son, it says there in 20, my son, keep thy father's commandments and forsake not the laws of thy mother. Keep his commandments. That's what he's asking us to do today. The sin of God hates all can all, as I say, can be forgiven. First Corinthians chapter six and nine through eleven talks about it. will not be inherited into the kingdom of God. Do not be deceived, people. Don't let people say we well, hear this and you can do that, but you can still do this and you can still make it to heaven on doing that. Yeah, or heaven just amidst or God's so loving kindness that he won't send anybody to hell but the Bible says no sin will enter into heaven no sin For fornicators idolaters adulterers homosexuals Solomonites that's just a few of the sins I just want to leave you with this word this morning. Come just as you are to the forgiven Savior. Come just as you are. He wants you. He didn't want anybody to perish, but everybody that ever asked him why. Now Jim started there a little while ago and uh, talking John's Gospel. What he's promised us, us as individuals. He said, let your heart not be troubled, but believe in me. Believe in God also. For in my Father's house are many mansions. And he said, if it were not so, I wouldn't have told you, Peggy. I wouldn't, I wouldn't bring it to your attention. I wouldn't let you know, let you put your faith in something else. But he said, I go away to prepare a place for you. That where I am, there you may be also. What a wonderful promise. But there has to be no sin, nothing that God hates in our lives. Let us stand. <coughs> Anybody need to pray? Anybody? It says for the lamp, for the commandments is the lamp, and the law is the light.
and the reproofs of instructions are the way of life. Keep these from evil. Keep from evil. Keep his commandments. But love him. But love him. Yes. That isn't love. Anybody need to pray? It's up to you this morning. Remember tonight, 6 o'clock, Brother Jim will be preaching. Remember Mother's Day coming up the 13th? Of course, remember Thursday is our National Day of Prayer at City Building. They're warm. And uh, try to be there if you can. May God bless you. Anybody need to pray? <clears throat> Brother David dismissed the word of prayer, would you? Father, we come today, Lord, giving you praise and glory for everything you have done. Lord, we ask you to, to take and let them take the message home with them. Yes, Lord. Let them take it not in that. It may, if it's not for them, let it not be for somebody they run into or they know that needs, needs to hear it. Lord, take and be with us throughout the rest of the day, Lord. And be with us as we go our separate ways and bring us back tonight for our 6 o'clock service. And we'll give you the praise and glory and honor that you so rightly deserve. And we'll do it with praise, Lord. <coughs> Amen. Amen. Amen.